Welcome back everybody to another market day. I am your designated inquirer. My name is Axel and today is 9-10 of 2020. Now, we had another return of the Bond King. Today, we saw a spectacular dive of the NASDAQ. And at the same time, as predicted, not even it's not even a prediction he's just just putting out a logical framework for how the world works and it seems to be working it seems to be working it seems to be following this this these rules okay it's the, it's, it's, there are it's just law he's just interpreting law it's just <laughs> it's just how our monetary system works that's all he, that's, that's what that's, that's what he's doing it's 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 genius in its simplicity that's what it is so today so if we look at this right here okay that tells us that we've got a a rise in a rise in bond price how do i know that because i have to compare it to the actual bond yield the bond yield Thanks to uh, brought to us by TradingView and Investopia, because that's how I went and I've actually found it today. If we look at what happened today, if we go to the single day, etc. Here we go from a single day. This was all of today. Uh, if we go to the five-minute chart here, okay. So we see today and then yesterday, right? If we looked at today. Throughout, let's see, what would it be? I think that was yesterday, September 4th, September 9th, 10th, and today is the 10th. All right, so today started around here. We went to, this was the close. Wait a minute, where are we going? Where are we? Hold on a second here. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay, 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 okay. So, it tried to climb up and it was like reaching, it was reaching an apex, right? Because um, people were thinking, oh, there's still ongoing uh, um, quantitative easing coming from the Fed. This is gonna, this is gonna raise, uh, this is gonna raise interest rates. No. So it's overall putting pressure on interest rates. There are some people that were ready and set to sell. Some of the, a good portion of uh, equity or bond traders happen to get that 20% of bonds the other day and uh, they've been more or less selling them raising the um, the uh, the interest rate okay the yield because um, as they sell yield goes up but now that that supply has more or less worked its way through the system the overall pressure of the system takes over which is the pressure put on by the Fed and so yield begins to drop so as of Let's see here. Where can all right? So this is six in the morning, seven in the morning. Okay, market opens. It's kind of running toward that this peak right here. Okay, it's testing the highs. It's testing the highs. And then at about where we see here that a couple things happen. One, that uh, Congress is basically um, continuously at a standstill. There is no, not even a short skinny bill. There's no skinny bill as far as stimulus is concerned. Dead in the water in the Senate. Died. Didn't happen. Not gonna happen. What else happened? There is still no progress on a overall agreement with, uh, between Democrats and Republicans as far as the Treasury Secretary is concerned. Um, he's not necessarily increasing the probability or his comments do not point to an increased probability of that happening so we shouldn't necessarily expect a stimulus bill coming through uh, anytime soon there's no break in the system yet where people are in a position to where they think that they have to move right um and when that happened and we also got that um unemployment uh, ticked upward third straight week in a row. Okay, ticked upward third straight week in a row. Unemployment claims. Okay, 
So we are, we're in a place where the interest rate at that point said, well, we don't have any expectation whatsoever of uh, further stimulus. There is no, um, there's nothing here that would point to uh, inflationary or improving economic, uh, uh, an economic environment. And so the only place left to go is down because I want to get into treasuries because I see more risk out in equities than I than than basically in the open market. And so I want to be covered by that by the U.S. government. So I want to buy bonds. So that's that's essentially what happened. They went in and started buying bonds and buying the bonds. They raised the price they raise the market price which is right here they raise the market price and the 10-year bond the yield drop so at the same time as the bond increased right here the bond dropped so just to confirm let's take a look at the t y x i think that's the right one t y x yeah all right is that what we saw here all right this one here it basically shows the opposite. So this one is pointing more toward what the yield is, or some measure of the year, some measure of the yield as far as the index is pointing to. So yesterday, I was a little bit confused as when, um, as when. The bond king was talking about uh, TYX because I didn't know whether or not this particular product was referring to um, was referring to either uh, the yield and or the price of the bond. I didn't know what it was referring to considering the number I did I just didn't know. But looking at it now and how it's actually reacting to the actual movement in bonds. It's obvious here that this is a measure of the yield, not necessarily the bond price. Where TLT, TLT is a measure of the bond price, okay? So there's a distinction there and it's something that is important to note when you're seeing him talk about these individual products and or indexes, okay? So as these two things were happening, if we look at the NQ, we do see we do see a drop in equities at the very same time as yields were dropping equities were dropping okay because it means that there's more fear in the system that they need to run into bonds and out of equities but it wasn't even just the equities they ran from gold okay they ran from gold they ran from i think the bitcoin let me see. Yep, they ran from Bitcoin. Okay. They ran from Bitcoin. Here was this drop right here. Thought it was going to we going to go to the moon or something like that. Nope, no skinny deal, no nothing. Boom, drop. And we're probably going to continue to see this drop uh um up until we get some sort of stimulus. And uh, that's going to be the remainder of the case probably for the rest of uh equities and yield. Um, so I think the, this drop that we've been seeing in NQ has been probably the start of a bear market until we get further stimulus. I think this is the extent to where, where a $1,200 and a $600 a week, uh, in enhanced unemployment gave us, this is what that gave us. Okay, which is pure inflationary uh, stimulus, right? Because it was a function of Congress and it was a function of the Treasury, which they are the only, only institutions that have any power whatsoever to actually create inflation. Okay, so that was the inflation, but in asset prices. Okay, what we're not seeing yet, what we're not seeing yet is inflation in the CPI or as uh, Bond King would say, true actual, what, what he cares about when referring to inflation. There has been plenty of inflation in asset prices, et cetera, and whatnot. 
in terms of being able to bolster the economy and being able to uh, help people, etc., and give the impression that that the economy is getting better, but um, when you cut off that spigot and there is no actual natural demand and no no natural hope springs in terms of why people would be more willing to spend money then then you get worsening conditions for the economy you get a drop in uh, uh people that are employed you get an increase in unemployment uh, claims and all the things that we have been seeing and and we get uh companies like uh, united and all the airlines some of them are stalling their um their um their furloughs and their firing of pilots and and uh, other employees and stuff some of them but most of them have to fire people and that goes along with thousands of other companies that took basically um payment protection program uh, funds right because they were by law contractually obligated to keep people hired till october 1st which is in like two weeks okay we've got basically a couple or three we've got three weeks to go till october 1st and that's when shit when stuff is gonna hit the fan right it's not gonna be pretty um you know knees to head fetal position it's gonna get bad um uh, at least that's i mean that was back in march you know that's the thing that we saw back in march people were starting to panic people were starting to see more fresh more more homeless more people not knowing what to do uh, losing their jobs, losing uh, their homes, losing where they were renting. Because the moratorium is only going to happen for so long. There are going to be people kicked out and there are going to be more people on the street. Unfortunately, that's how it's going to go down. Um, because there isn't, there isn't a method to, you know, just give all these people a job or money. And like what we were seeing before uh giving people money in terms of stimulus was a direct method for which a local and small businesses could actually stay keep not only keep the doors open but thrive um but we saw that very very early on when those checks first started getting dispersed and people started to get them and they could spend it on back when back when it was more important and what would have been the best to have twelve hundred dollar stimulus checks go to everybody on a monthly basis uh for a period of six months we would be in a lot better position than we are now but with a much stronger actual foundation for being able to get through all of this if we would have been able to do twelve hundred dollar checks for everybody on a monthly basis and to be able to keep everybody home except for actual essential workers etc there would be more companies that would be willing to stay closed and there would be more people willing to stay out of work um for that period of time and we would probably be over and done with all of this mess but it's neither here nor there okay um can something like that still happen possibly um but not under this administration um that type of hope that type of uh change may or may not happen under a biden presidency which would explode the deficit but considering the underlying erosion of uh what i think is the foundation of economic activity um and and the capacity for economic activity without short of that i think we're going to be seeing a very prolonged period of time where the u.s has a very tough time increasing the gdp and we might see a uh, position of uh, economic power over to china a lot quicker than we thought if we don't do anything as a country yeah um so 
look to the future right now we are a few it is uh, currently eight o'clock in the evening okay this is a late video for me but um it is in the middle of the week and i will continue to make these videos i will try and make them every day tomorrow i will try and do my best to put out a video on a friday um anyway uh what looks like happened after hours at the end of the day is that we got a pop down okay uh, from from the announcement from that announcement it was basically downhill from there um and then if we go to the five minute here we'll take a better look at what what was going on from here where it was basically announced we were just it was just melting right we were melting got higher volume uh, into the melt down and uh, after hours because we ended up closing the day closing the day here we have since then recovered some of those losses okay but we have not uh, reached you know higher levels where there would be some sort of resistance obvious resistance area we have not jumped up like the rest of the world isn't looking at us right now and saying hmm is this a really great buying opportunity because the buying opportunity was this dead cat bounce from this low right here that was this was the opportunity and that's where the rest of the world saw opportunity overnight in overnight sessions right they saw opportunity especially in china that probably has a better or europe rather Europe in China is probably here and then Europe is probably here um, they saw a or Japan I'm not exactly sure which would be I'm not sure what, what order they would be opening um, but if it's uh, India China Japan Europe etc uh, I'm not sure in what order it goes but overseas did get a little spooked but we are were able to recover almost on a daily basis what what was happening from the downturn even at every point overnight we saw our low close and an upward gap up overnight generally generally um because they somewhat had you know basically hope that u.s markets were kind of intact what's happening right now even though we are seeing higher prices overnight um it's not a resounding it's not what was happening like for example here right it wasn't like oh yeah this is it then you know we're, we've reached the bottom we're good here because we got basically rejection at this level up here right we we there was rejection and this is a new low or a a low established right we still have to establish a lower low even though there was one here this is a lower low and this is, could be a higher low as well and um, it would take basically China and or Europe to basically take us to the next leg down and set us up for an opening around the lows of of, of two days ago uh, to put us in a great position to break these levels and to keep falling further down. We're already breaking on a consistent basis um, this trend line even though it's kind of mimicking it on the way like even though it's past it let's right here 30 minutes let's go to the here here this turn line here was broken we tried to recover up and above it it broke again today tomorrow it's kind of moving in the same word upwards trajectory still but tomorrow if it uh <laughs> if it if it falls, we may see a continuation of of this trend in particular. Go ahead and adjust that right there. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and redraw the channel. So we're kind of actually even close to the top of a downward moving channel. I'm not exactly sure where where it's exactly gonna be. Right could be it could be there right but so we there's still room below us to to go further right um so just keep that in mind again none of this is for sure um 
what if what if this is a uh, a higher higher low and we get a higher high that could happen also tomorrow we could see a pop to the upside and forget any of this ever happened because this is still a we see here this is still a 12 percent uh correction and that would be a healthy uh a health healthy contraction uh to keep moving higher for some people but also considering what we do know about like for example start adding in here load steady set the monthly etc okay if we add in here what we know about the rsis for these different levels even though we're still in sky high territory for momentum it is turning and at each and every subsequent time period it is shortening up we could basically see a downward signal and when we do on each subsequent uh time scale it is gonna probably accelerate the downward motion and that can be pretty scary so if we go to the daily here we've already crossed we are headed toward basically negative momentum which is going to be the first time in a very long time here considering that the last time we saw negative momentum was back in april we've been on positive momentum since april wow that's uh, pretty spectacular holy moly all right so how much further do we have to uh capture negative momentum well 70 points and considering that every day we're dropping here let's take a look from 125 to 76 that's 125 that's like 50 points so tomorrow we might get tantalizingly close to negative momentum to reaching negative momentum even though we've already crossed it on the daily we've already crossed this this line right here with this line right here with the negative momentum sorry in terms of the rsi you guys haven't been able to see them because they have been hidden from your view my bad um so yes that is that is what i'm looking at that is what i'm expecting um this is what i see i still don't know what this line means yeah it's kind of strange anyway and also today oh that was that today whoa wait is this right? That can't be right. Is this right? Hold on, let's go to the five minute here. All right, is it me or here is looks, this looks like more volume than this, right? But for some reason on the daily it's not registering yeah this is more volume than this so we saw an increase in volume to the downside so that is pretty significant so continuation is statistically more likely statistically more likely but on the daily go to the daily is not registering how strange it is not registering because we should have higher volume here we should have higher volume how strange interesting huh so think swim is not registering the volume correctly on the daily chart huh huh all right uh maybe that's a technical issue or whatnot but it is not currently registering that increase in daily volume because this uh first candle was a little higher but would have made up for in lack of height here it did make up for in follow through volume because generally these other candles here saw a a decrease volume 
throughout the day as is usual per any other day but this was pretty close to even the starting volume of the day so uh generally this whole day has higher volume than the previous than this previous day and maybe even this day so very interesting and i cannot wait to see how the rest of the world takes uh what happened today in u.s markets um and judges the nq and uh how bonds tend to move overnight because uh, that is also very interesting um without congress actually doing something here um equities are basically running out of steam i don't necessarily see something um coming out of left field and all of a sudden there is a swell in economic activity short of uh congress doing something because they are the ones basically in control of people's lives right now um short of that uh left to their own devices and the market left at will um i don't necessarily see something uh, the situation improving a whole lot so we're gonna be seeing basically the bond kings projections uh come to fruition and we're gonna see a decreasing yield still we're gonna see an increasing dollar which means that we're gonna be seeing a decreasing commodities from overseas which includes gold silver bitcoin um even though it's kind of hard to say that's a that's a commodity from overseas but it is a currency so we're standing against other currencies is going to get stronger so they they are going to decrease in regard to our dollar um so the value per per commodity will drop because our dollar is stronger uh so you, there will probably be um uh, changes uh to those commodities and um, also decreasing equities um, because money will effectively be leaving the markets and going into bonds so statistically that's probabilistically what's probably going to happen um, whether or not it happens in a straight line or we see another dead cat bounce or something like that to the effect um, it could happen I don't know I cannot actually tell the future uh, but it is a good guess um, now Please do seek uh, your own financial advice. Do not take the things that I'm saying as a recommendation because I am not a licensed uh, uh, individual in the state of California that is fiduciarily responsible for other people's decisions and their wealth. Uh, please do seek your own financial advisor and counsel. Uh, seek your own information and come to the conclusions by yourself. Please do not take my uh, these videos um, as any sort of recommendation. They are only purely for informational and educational purposes only. Um, so with that said, I hope that all of you guys stay safe, stay healthy, avoid the clouds and the smoke here if possible, if you guys are in California. And uh, uh, yeah, until next time, take care guys. Bye.